flow activation stuff. So one of the first things that I like to do before we get on the ground is some wrist stuff, right? So we're gonna roll the wrists. And I'm just turning over one wrist over the other. And then when we switch, I like to come here and then push it back around the other way. So you can start nice and slow, then you can pick it up. That's an important thing with these mobilizations is going at different speeds, right? Because we, we want to be good at going slow at these things to feel the movement, but then we also want to get out of our head and just feel the flow of the movement, feel our body. We've done the groundwork with going nice and slow. Now let's go ahead and, and go a little bit quicker so we, we can we can maybe identify some areas that don't feel super comfortable right um, this is the wrist wave here so I'm starting with an elbow when my wrist comes through and my hands come through and then I finish in a similar fashion so wrist and then elbow right so you're just coming here and I find that when I really worked on keeping my shoulders relaxed and out of that movement and I start to open up the elbow quite a bit and so I'm gonna reverse it right so you might have difficulty reversing it but well, I probably should show you right now what I would do if I couldn't go the other way here and then here right so we're getting a similar motion on each wrist, right? Flexing and extending the wrist, but without the dynamic nature. Going the other way on the wrist rolls took me about a month, or the wrist waves took me about a month. So, you know, we gotta build those pathways in our brain. All right, this one's super important, and you might not feel anything right now, but the more you do with your forearms and the tighter your forearms get, the more this lateral line stretch is gonna be really important. So I'm going to press the sides of my hand. So we wanna stretch this lateral line right here. I wanna press that forward. Get a nice stretch there. Same thing here. The better I do about keeping my shoulders nice and relaxed, the more I can get into those other areas, the elbow, the wrist, the forearm that lateral line and then we're just gonna shake everything out so you're gonna make a nice shaka symbol rice you know the albino Hawaiian right there he's really good at it so we're just gonna shake like this you know if you want to use any of this shit as dance moves too by all means quick I wasn't even getting the, uh, the mobilization there all right so that's that's a scenario where hey Grant maybe go a little slower right too quick with I'm it. going turn those hands together facing each other doing the same thing and then I'm just gonna shake my hands out and then the last one we're gonna go reverse prayer position so I'm just gonna show you from the side right here I'm going to Drive my elbows down, my wrists up. It's also called wrist, uh, wrist relief position. And you can just maybe hang out here if you're really feeling tired from some of this stuff. Okay, awesome. Next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get on the ground. So, whatever, my sweatpants are already sort of wet. So, let's get down here. And when I'm setting up, is this framed all right? Yep. Yeah. When I'm setting up, I want my wrists underneath my shoulders. And we'll get to this in a sec, but I really want my lats to be activated. And then I want my knees underneath my hips, or better yet, belly button area. Now that is going to be a lot of hip flexion and core stability at the same time right there. So. Just keep that in mind, you can be anywhere between where I'm at right here, where it's a little bit more belly button, or back underneath the hips. And 
to get started, we're going to go with some scapular push-ups here. So, I'm going to think about pulling myself to the ground while keeping my arms straight. One thing we can do to really activate those lats and mimic a pulling sensation is to rip the ground apart. So I'm sliding my hands out, but keeping them stable, right? So spreading the floor, and I'm gonna think about pinching my shoulder blades together. And then as I push away, I can think about crushing the ground or keeping that same tension or just pressing up. Whatever's most comfortable for you right now. But I would definitely recommend when going into the scapular push-up, spreading that floor apart and you should be able to see that I'm not overarching the back there, right? And I'm not rounding the back a ton, right? I'm actually able to keep a neutral spine and pinch those shoulder blades together. go as slow or as fast as you'd like on stuff like that, really good way to restore that movement in your shoulder blade. So we're here, I'm going to sink in and then I'm going to protract, not round the entire back, keep those, keep the pelvis in the same spot, but protract through the upper body here, pinch, send those shoulder blades apart from each other this about three to five times and then you're going to find something right in the center. Now what I want you to do is I want you to think about squeezing those glutes. So what I'm doing is I'm just thinking about activation, right? I'm not pushing the hips through. I'm just thinking about squeezing the glutes, engage through the core, either bracing the core or pressing that belly button to the spine. And then this alone Pressing into the ground, spreading the floor, squeezing the glutes. We hang out here, we're getting super in touch with the ground and super in touch with our body, right? So this is an excellent place to begin. This is the six point beast right here. So in this position, we're just getting super activated and holding. Now, if you feel like you're ready to step up, we're then going to bring those knees an inch off the ground. We want to keep that same engagement, right? Same engagement through the upper body, same engagement through the core, same engagement through the hip area. So I'm um, activating those glutes. I'm um, activating the core with how it, it makes sense to me, either bracing or pressing in that belly button, spreading the floor with my shoulders, and then I'm bringing those knees just about an inch off the ground. breathing. So you just saw me do a little tongue extension, just kind of loosen up the jaw a little bit. One thing I noticed when I went through getting certified in this animal flow program is that I was gripping so much, right, with, with the neck and the jaw and my tongue position was weird and my breathing was a little weird. So think about creating that tension throughout the body but relaxing that face, relaxing the breath. The better you can do that, the more efficient you're going to be with these movements, right? Your body's actually going to be like, oh, I can do this in a relaxed way, right? And then everything else we do when it comes to that is going to be that much easier because you've patterned the body to uh, to really perform these movements with efficiency and ease.